morning, everyone. Welcome to our midweek worship service. My name is BJ, and I'm one of the leaders here in Victory Quezon Avenue. Kamusta po kayo? Kaligit na na po ng linggo. Okay pa ba? Or stress na sa trabaho? I hope that tonight will be a good time for you to be refreshed, especially in worshiping God and by listening to His Word. And wag nyo na rin pag, ano to, wag nyo na rin kalimutan to invite your family, your friends, and your office mate. So tag nyo na sila doon sa comment section and invite them to join us as we worship God. Right? So as we prepare our hearts and our minds to worship God, join me in prayer. Lord, thank you that once again, Father, that we're able to gather, mapa-online man or on-site, to worship you in spirit and in truth. Father, we are in faith that you are with us, Lord, with a word, dear God, that assured us, Pina, that your presence is with us. And Father, I pray to our brothers and sisters, Lord, especially for those, dear God, who are attending our service, Lord, na mayroong baggage because of the things that, that, that they have experienced for the past few days. Father, I pray that may you give them a fresh hope, their God, a new faith, their God, for them to see, Father, that you are in control, that you are the one who will deliver you, they will, that you will be the one who will deliver out them from all those struggles and testings that they are experiencing right now. Father, I pray that tonight, may your word speak to us, Lord. Father, reveal to us, your God, the things that you want us to do, Lord. Father, bless our time we worship. We love you, Lord. Receive our worship. This we ask in Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Everyone, let's worship God.
send us, God, in your name. Jesus, we are here now. Fill us with your love. Fill us with your love. Jesus, oh, you are with us. Send us in your name. Oh, in your name.
Yes, Lord, that's our declaration tonight, Father, that our life belongs to you, Lord God. It is yours. You paid the price for us to be redeemed, Father. You gave us life. You gave us hope. And Lord, we are forever grateful for what you did to us. Lord, I pray. I just sense in my spirit right now that maybe some of you are having those doubts and fears or in question. Lord, back it. My brothers and sisters, our God loves you so much. And hindi aksidente at kasali ka kayon at nanonood ng service natin because God wants to speak to you. God wants to reveal Himself to you. God wants to give you life and a hope. And Father, I pray for these people, Lord God, that may they encounter you, that they may have a personal revelation from you, Lord. I pray, Lord God, that tonight they will see things differently, knowing that you are with them, that you are in control of everything. Father, thank you. Even through this platform, Lord God, your words are so powerful that can speak to us, Lord. And I pray for all of us who are joining us online, prepare our hearts to receive your word, Father. Thank you for reminding us how precious we are and how you love us so much. We bring you back all the glory and honor to your name. This we ask in Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Come on, church. Let's praise His name. Come on. Once again, welcome to Victory for those nakakapanood lang. And we exist to honor God and make disciples. And later tonight, we will have our communion. So please, ready nyo na yung mga elements nyo. A, a piece of cracker or bread and a cup of juice or Available po yung wine. And tonight, we will have our communion. And as we continue to worship God, let's worship Him through our finances. Allow me to read to you Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8 to 10. The scripture says, For by grace you have been saved through faith. And this is not your own doing. It is the gift of God. Not a result of works, so that no one may boast. Verse 10, For we are His workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. Church, from this verse, it's remind us, it reminds us rather that God did not save us because of our good works. I hope we are clear on that. But the passage is telling us that God saved us and recreated us to do good works. And one of the things that God prepared us for to do is by giving our tithes and offering. We're doing this out of our generosity in helping advance, in helping to advance the kingdom of God. And it's our hope and prayer tonight that as you give, may God reveal Himself to you to give you a vision that what you're doing, more than honoring God with your wealth, is also you are helping advancing God's kingdom to those people that needs to listen and to know the free gift that God has given through His Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for this opportunity for us to honor you, to bring back the glory to you through our giving. Lord, thank you that you have given us the opportunity to be part of your ministry, Lord God, to advance your kingdom through our giving. And Father, I pray for all those people, Lord God. Bless every tighter and giver. Bless the works of their hand, Lord God. And we acknowledge, Father, that you are the one who will sufficiently provide our needs. And you're the one who blesses us with the talent, skills, and gift to produce wealth. So Father, I pray that as we give, Lord God, we are giving expectantly, knowing that we are helping other people to know Jesus Christ. Father, thank you. We are truly blessed because of the amazing things that you've done in our life. 
We love you, Lord. This we ask in Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. And search uh, for the ways to give. Uh, if you want to use your credit card, debit card, or also GCash, you may visit victory.org.ph slash give. And also, if you have a GCash app on your phone, you can just uh, scan the QR code that's being flashed on the screen. And also, if you want to give to our missions, Every Nation Campus, and Real Life Foundation, you may visit everynation.org.ph slash give. And you may also visit us here at our center every Sunday to drop your tithes and offering. We're open from 10 a.m. up to 3 p.m. And you can also do direct deposit. Just uh, copy the back details that's being flashed on the screen. God bless as you give. And tonight, we are now in our last installment of our series, Life Together. I know that we are excited to hear the word from Pastor Jerome. But before that, let us watch this video. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to our midweek service and welcome to Victory. We are live on site. Nandito po tayo sa Eton Centuries. At na-excite din po ako na soon as time, we will worship God together in this place. So, if you are excited to worship with us, uh, kahit na uh, Sunday po yan or Wednesday, would you type, Para po ma-shout out ko lamang po yung ating mga family and friends who are joining us tonight. Type nyo naman po na yes sa ating pong comment section para po malaman natin sino ba sa inyo. Uh, sabi mo, Pastor Jerome, sawa na ako, sa bahay lang ako. I want to worship God sa ating on-site, dyan sa Victory, Quezon Avenue. Would you type yes para po ma-acknowledge natin po kayo as we are um, reading your comments right now. Sabi po ni Des Garcia, yes. Gayun din po si RM Season. Hello sa iyo, bro. Kumusta ka? And also Jaylin Panes, yes. Gayun din ang sinabi ni Mark Mercado. Excited ako, Mark. Makita ka uli. Volunteer tayo dito sa Wednesday. And even si Mel at Vincula. Ah, Mayi. Uh, praying for your family. We're here to pray. And um, um, uh, nandito lang kami para sa iyo, Mayi. Gayun din si Joy Marshall. Who's, celebrated her birthday last week. Gayun din si Ryan Acosta Magaspak na ikakasal na. Excited ako bro. July 28 na. Gayun din sa ating mga leaders na si Aki Aban who, are watching, who is watching also. Gerard Gueco, Geraldine Delgado, Abet Angeles. At gayun din si um, Lori, si Kai Di Sapphire. Nasa probinsya ka man. Thank you for always joining us. Marvin Toka, yung kumpare ko, my longest Victory Group member since uh, 10 years ago na yata tayo magkaroon, magkaroon ng uh, Victory Group. Until now, thank you Marvin. Gayun din si Monica Vicente. Good to see you again here, Monica. One, uh, one Wednesday, dalo ka naman sa atin dito. And also si Mer Kamba, mga kaibigan ko po yan. Gayun din si Christine Pauline. And also to all our friends and family who are excited to be with us sa ating pong on-site. As a church, we exist to honor God and we make disciples. And because we honor God, we want to seek our awesome God in our mid-year prayer, fasting, and consecration. Remember, last week, we mentioned about our schedule. Uh, mangyayari po yan ng June, July 6, 7, and 8, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. So, come and join us via Zoom. Meron po tayong 12 noon and 6 p.m. evening prayer meeting. Uh, watch out and uh, you may check our Facebook account for more details. Reminder lang po, 
Next week, wala po muna tayong service at 7 p.m. because we will be having our 6 p.m. prayer meeting. Kaya naman, wag ho kayo mawala. Maaga lang ho kayo mag-join, 6 p.m. for our Jul- July 7 prayer meeting. Moreover, we would like to remind you about our um, um, schedule uh, for this uh, month of July. So, kung malang sabihin sa inyo na ang ating pong Wednesday service, ang ating pong Sunday, 9 a.m., Sunday, eh, 1 p.m., and even kay Pastor Noel, Sunday, 5 p.m., we are doing on-site, live po tayo dito, but being broadcasted online. Kaya naman po napapanood nyo kami. Pero excited po ako na sa Sunday, uh, 11 a.m., meron po tayong on-site worship service uh, na-invite po natin yung ating pong ilang leaders and volunteers. And the following week, 3 p.m. naman, on-site worship service. Unti-unti po, gradually, babalik po tayo dito. Pinost ko nga po sa Facebook ko kanina. There are vacant seats right now, but one day, magkakasama po tayo dito sa ating center. So tonight, we're on the last week, as um, BJ um, uh, mentioned earlier, we are on the last installment of our series, Life Together. My prayer is that we will all understand that our relationship uh, relationships are a reflection of God's covenant with His people. So ang mangyayari po yan, kung tinitingnan natin na si, si God yung, um, yung center of every relationship, siya po yung ating pong... Uh, uh, magiging sentro sa marriages, yung husband and wife, gayon din po yung um, sa families, parents and children. And today, we will be talking about marketplace, employers and employees. Join me as we read the Word of God, Ephesians 5.21. It says here, Submitting to one another out of reverence for Christ. And jump to uh, chapter 6, verses 5 to 9. Slaves, obey your earthly masters with respect and fear and with sincerity of heart, just as you would obey Christ. Obey them not only to win their favor when their eyes is on you, but as slaves of Christ, doing the will of God from your heart. Verse 7. Serve wholeheartedly as if you were serving the Lord, not people. Because you know that the Lord will reward each one for whatever good they do, whether they are slave or free. And last verse, and masters, treat your slaves in the same way. Do not threaten them since you know that he who is their master and yours is in heaven, and there is no favoritism with Him. Let us all pray. Holy Spirit, we need you, Lord. Ngayong gabi, samahan niyo po kami as we talked about, Lord God, ang aming pong, uh, uh, status being employers and being employees, Lord God. May we continue, Lord God, to glorify your name even in our workplaces or our businesses. Be with us, Holy Spirit. We honor you in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. You know, uh, church, psychologically speaking, in every relationship, meron daw uh, na napoproduce ang every relationship, kahit may mga friends ka, sa family mo, either growth or conflict. There's no such uh, thing uh, like stagnant relationship. Yung mga hindi kayo nakikita, pero magkaibigan kayo o yung mag-asawa na habang tumatagal, parang as is lang, merong growth yan or it creates conflict. The question is, what are we producing with our existing relationships? Like, sa inyo pong mga bosses, sa inyo pong mga supervisors. And also, natanong nyo na ba, kung inyong relationship po dyan sa inyo pong uh, company produces conflict or growth. And to avoid chaos, we need to understand that someone has to lead and others will follow. But the mutual submission, ito pong context, I want lang na ilata po sa atin na sinabi ni Paul na in relation to masters and servant, yung context po nung panahon ngayon, sa atin po ngayon, yung mga employers and employees. Just as husband and wives, 
katulad mo ng parents and children, ang context mo neto, listen to this, dapat alam natin yung God-designated roles of authority. Sino po ba yung may authority? Husband over wife, parents over children, and employers or masters over servants. But the authority, hindi po ito galing sa inherent superiority na, yes, ayan, ako yung boss, di ba? Ako yung nakakatas, ako magulang mo. Lahat ng gagawin mo, sun- lahat ng gagawin mo, sasabihin ko, sundin mo ako. But they possess the authority. Now listen to this. As a stewardship from God. Binigay ka, binigay yan sa inyo, Lord. Po ano po yung inyong authority para po sundin nyo yung kalooban ni Lord to fulfill His uh, mission and will into your life. Can I see those people? Kung kayo po ay isang parent, meron po kayong anak, can you type po sa ating comment section, parent. Para ma-acknowledge ko po how many parents do we have here in Wednesday service natin. Parent. And also, kung kayo naman po ay husband, like si Pastor J. Lord, who is watching right now, type nyo po husband. At kung kayo naman po ay uh, may, 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 may position kayo or business owner kayo, like uh, si Albert Moronia, ating kaibigan, type naman nyo po dyan, employers. So would you type, kung kayo po ay may position, employer, if you're a father, or if you're a husband, type husband, and kung kayo po yung magulang, type parents. So katulad, basahin ko naman po, shout out ko po ulit ang ating mga kaibigan na nanonood ngayon. Sabi po ni Gerard, nice topic. Uh, gayon din si uh, Elma Moreno, parents. Brian Begiras, yung aking kaibigan. Bro, sabi niya, husband to be. Congratulations sa upcoming wedding niyo ni Lorraine. Joy Marshall, parent, parent. Gayon din si Mark. Mommy Bird. Marisa, husband. Jaylin, parent. Si Ames, parent. Mark, uh, husband. Gayon din si Minda, parent and husband. You see, meron po kayong authority sa inyo pong wife and children because pinagkatiwala po sila ni Lord sa inyo. Now, having said this, submission is, uh, der- uh, therefore, is not one way. You have to submit, but it is mutual. Submission, however, or therefore, is not one way, but mutual. Yun po yung ina-emphasize ni Paul sa kanyang sulat dito sa Ephesians. And being under God's authority doesn't mean na, eto ha, ito iba na rin ko. Christian ako eh. So kahit hindi ko nasundin yung batas na yan, kasi si Lord yung Panginoon ko, yung manager ko, si Lord lang ang Lord and Master ko. Hindi po. Hindi po tayo free of, of from all um, social or civil uh, authority. Rather, it means, if we are under God's authority, tayo po mga Christian, kayo po nanonood ngayon, dapat napapakita po natin yung gentleness and humility natin over that authority na binigay sa inyo ni Lord sa buhay mo. And in the book of Ephesians, Paul gives the final illustration. We have to um, uh, submit to one another out of reverence for Christ. Now, pag binasa po natin yung verse, yung ating pong uh, uh, binasa kanina, we may be thinking, Pastor Jerome, what does this ha- verse have to do with my life? Hindi naman ako slave. Bakit nakalagay dyan, no? masters and slaves? But to really understand uh, kung ano po yung sinasabi dito, we need to uh, tiguro yung context, ano po yung pinanggalingan, yung ating story. It's very difficult to um, to read a passage about slavery because yung iniisip ko po, yung pinabasa ko to, slavery kasi yung mga uh, slave trade, di ba yung mga nangyari sa ating history books, hindi po ganun yun. But the slavery or yung bond service, iba pong Bible translation that Paul talks about is very different sa ating pong naisip about slavery. The slavery that Paul talks about is much better than slavery na nababasa po natin or napapanood because it was non-racial. Nung panahon po noon uh, sa Ephesus, hindi po ki Egyptian ka o ibang lahi ka, slave ka. Hindi po it was non-racial and second, ito po ay temporary. Hindi po uh, uh, slaves were expected to be emancipated but by, by the age of 30. So pinag-iipunan po nila yung kanilang kalayaan. So by bago sila tumanda, they are all free. Pag naglakad ka nga sa road of uh, Ephesus, hindi mo alam kung sino yung mga 
slaves dati or currently slave. Ganun po yung context nila. So, you see, church, that Paul did was put slaves and masters on equal footing. So, tanong ko sa inyo, how do we apply this to our lives today? 2021 na, wala namang slaves dito sa Philippines. We can apply this passage, I believe, to our vocations, to our workplace, in our work lives. We are not exactly the same uh, situation na yung, mga, uh, yung, yung, yung audience ni, ni Paul that time. But tonight, ito po introduction ko. Dalawa lamang po yung sasabihin ko sa inyo ngayong gabi. We can learn two things from what Paul says. First, how the gospel changes our work view and how the gospel changes our standards for work. So number one, basahin po natin ang verse 5. Slaves, obey your earthly masters with, highlight ko po, with respect and fear and with sincerity of heart. Just as you would obey Christ. Parang hirap nun na, no? Example, sa context natin ngayon, may boss ka, yung mga leader ka na, na, na memresyo, kailangan dede, e binigay lang sa'yo. O kaya, yung, alam mo yung mga, yung mga pag dumadaan yung boss mo, talagang nanginginig ka na sa takot kasi nga medyo terror, medyo papahiya ka pag hindi maganda yung performance mo. Sabihin ng Bible verse na binasa natin, Obey your earthly master with respect and fear and sincerity of heart. Sabi mo parang hirap naman maging sincere kung yung tao na yun, hindi naman dapat irespeto. Siya nga, late lagi sa trabaho, pinamalan ng pinamalan ng cheque yung boss kong ngayon, tapos lahat. ng credit sa kanya. Lahat ng bahirap sa akin. Ako na lang. Sabi natin drama sa trabaho, di ba? Pero nakailangan natin may tindan just as you would obey Christ. Verse 6, Obey them not only to win their favor when their eyes is on you, but as slaves of Christ, doing the will of God from your heart. Guilty po ako dyan. Kasi po, nung, nung ako po ay bago maging kristyano, Kapag uh, nandiyan yung boss ko, ilalatag ko yung mga papers. Parang dami kong paperwork na kailangan gawin. Kunyari, abalang-abala ako. Gusto ko makita ng boss ko. Gusto ko ma-win yung favor niya. Ang sipag na manager sa trabaho. Ganun po ako dati. Pero pag wala na siya, okay, balik na yung mga papel. Gagay mo yung mga batang 90s, katulad namin nila Iska, di ba? nila Maita, nila, nila Shana, at Bibi, mga solitaire sa computer. Di po ba? Tapos pag nandiyan yung Yung boss mo, sasara mo yung solitaire. Tapos, gagawa ka uli. Why? Yung po yung mindset natin sa work because we want kasi na, to impress our bosses, our managers as employees. We need their approval, their favor. But some of us, marami po nagko-complain sa trabaho. If anyone should uh, uh, dapat ho mag-complain, eto po yung mga slaves na tinutuko yung audience ni Paul that time because sila po kasi ang sinasabihan ni Paul, you are slaves, nakatira po ko sila sa bahay ng mga, ng mga masters nila. When you say kasi band servant na nakatira po yan sa bahay. Pero sinasabi ni Lord, obey them as you obey Christ. Ang ibig po sabihin niya, he says that their work is holy. It, in some way, pwede natin sabihin, service in the Lord and will be evaluated by God. Verse 7 says, Serve wholeheartedly as if you were serving the Lord, not the people, because you know that the Lord will reward each one for whatever good they do, whether they are slave or free. Why does Paul say that the work is holy? What Paul is saying here, whatever your work or your profession is right now, Maybe some of you, doctor, em uh, employee, lawyer, architect, engineer, BPO, or student, whatever it is na ginagawa mo ngayon, it is part of your service in the Lord or to the Lord. You can serve God. Ito po ah, favorite ko ito mga lala mo, brother. Kahit mo mag, sa karindira, nagluluto ka, kahit na security guard, tagabukas ka, or tagaserve ka ng food, you will honor God Because you are serving for the Lord and to the Lord. 
So, we need to understand that our work, our vocation, whatever you're doing right now, is holy. You can say that you are in the Lord's service, and the scripture um, explain us or uh, teaches us that something completely about work. Because work isn't part of the course. Remember, ano po ba yung unang trabaho ni Adam? Pinagkatiwala sa kanya yung Eden? Sabi po doon, subdue the earth and be fruitful. Why? Before sin being corrupted in this world, God gave Adam the responsibility to subdue the earth, have dominion over it, and be fruitful within it. So, this is part of what it means to bear the name of or the image of God. That is why there is, sa ating pong mga uh, buhay, meron pong uh, gusto natin na mag-create, mag-develop, to add value sa lahat ng ginagawa natin. Because, yun naman po talaga, kung kayo nga po nagtatrabaho, boring na, lahat na lang ginagawa na, hindi wala ng growth, di ba? Ayaw nyo na mag-work. Kaya naman, we need to understand na ang ating pong work is part of what God design, God's image, gusto ni Lord, na everything that we do, we put value because we are bearing the image of God. Kuha niyo po ba yun na gusto kong maitindihan natin na, na katulad po ni Joseph, the dreamer. This is one of the examples na gusto kong sa i-highlight because siya po ay naging servant, pero po na-promote siya at naging siyang master or naging second chief of command siya sa Egypt. Tingnan niyo po yung story ah. Genesis 39 verse 9. Ang context po nito, si Joseph the dreamer, servant, naging slave siya, bineta siya ng kapatid niya, nandun siya sa Egypt, uh, Egyptian master, si Potiphar. Tapos, dahil sa kanya yung grace, sa kanya yung favor ni Lord, he is excellent sa pagiging servant. At dahil doon, pinagkatiwala ni Potiphar ang lahat ng kanyang household, mga business, accounting sa kanya. Pero yung asawa niya, Sino po ba yung asawa ni Potiphar? Ang pangalan po niya, Mrs. Potiphar. Ngayon, inaakit araw-araw dahil nga matipuno, matangkad, gwapo, at sabi po sa Bible, ganun po si Joseph na gusto po ng wife ni Potiphar na may mangyari sa kanila. At eto po yung sinabi ni Joseph sa verse na to. No one is greater in this house than I am. My master has withheld nothing from me except you because you are his wife. How then could I do such a wicked thing and sin against God? You see, ang mindset po ni, ni Joseph, hindi takot ako kay Potiphar, baka mahuli niya may meron tayong relationship. Hindi po. Ang sabi niya, iniisip niya, hindi ko ito magagawa sa Panginoon ko. Ang kanya pong master, hindi si Potiphar, but the Lord. The master is God himself. So, ano po ba yung lesson na ito? Ano man po yung trabaho nyo? Ano man po yung profession nyo? We are doing our image-bearing work in this world. Yung bang malalaman ng mga katrabaho mo na kayo ay kristyano because nakikita sa buhay nyo. Same as si Joseph, kahit ito nakulong siya dahil uh, 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 pinagbintangan siya ng rape o ng, uh, na, na, asawa ni Potiphar, pero naging Warren, leader pa rin siya dahil nandun po talaga integrity. Yung buong karakter ni Joseph. Ganyan din po sana sa atin. Being Christian, dapat alam po ng kasamaan nyo sa trabaho, sa BPO. Alam mo ng mga staff nyo na you are a Christian because they are seeing your good examples. Nakikita na integrity, pagiging industrious mo, hindi ka late sa trabaho that you're considerate, that you're giving your all out or all in, your excellent work for the Lord. Ito po yung challenge sa atin. Being employees and employers, dapat po sa ating ka-business deal, sa ating pong uh, uh, pakikipasalamuha, sa ating pong workplaces, dapat nakita po sa atin, si Lord, ano po ba yung gusto yung image sa inyong trabaho, sa inyong business? Are you bearing the image of God? Are you adding value? the workplace or the business that you have right now, then the masters that Paul wrote who would have been tempted with feelings or superiority. Kasi pag alam na may posisyon ka, 
uh, when you're above others, di ba minsan lumalaki na yung mga ulo ng mga tao? Parang iniisip nila na inf- ako yung superior, inferior ka. And sometimes we treat them as means to an end. Kaya naman, listen to this, employers, sabi sa verse 9, and masters, treat your slaves in the same way. Kung kanina po, about employees yung pinag-uusapan natin with fear, with sincerity of heart. Ngayon naman, yung mga employers, do the same way. Kung kayo po may ari ng negosyo or kayo po may position sa trabaho, this message is also for you. The reason why is twofold is in the rest of verse 9. Sabi po dyan, do not threaten them since you know that he who is both their master and yours is in heaven and there is no favoritism with him. We need to understand yung ating pong Greco, a Roman society, yung mga masters po, binigyan sila ng right to do what uh, best for their uh, slaves kasi para tanggap po sa lipunan yun eh. So Paul commands na yung mga masters na iset aside nyo po yung inyong pong rights and you treat your slaves as if They are your brothers or sisters in Christ. Parang, parang gato lang po sa context natin. Meron kang kasabay sa bahay, driver. Tapos pag may on-site on na tayo, kasama mo rin, nag-worship yung kasambahay mo. Pero pag uwi, paano mo ititreat yung inyo pong mga kasambahay? Yung inyo pong pagbukas po yung sa, sa, sa subdivision nyo, yung mga guards. Are we treating them with fair Good and just. Why? Because we're seeing them na hindi ka inferior na, Teka, ako yung boss eh. Ako yung, ako yung nasa position eh. We have to, to obey. Hindi po. We need to see all people equal footing. Ito yung sinasabi ni po sa verse na to. Paul tells us two things here. Especially to those of us who tend to overvalue our work. First, no matter who we are or what our status is, We are fellow slaves of Christ. Our identity does not come from our work or our vocation, but it comes from the fact that we are servants of Christ. Like kami po, pag nawala po ba ako sa full time, yung identity ko po nasa church or nasa ministry, no. Our identity comes from God. Gaya hindi po sa trabaho nyo. Pag hindi ka na ba naging teacher, or halimbawa, nag-iba ka ng profession, nawawala na yung parang feeling mo, identity mo as a person. Hindi! Dahil identity natin, galing yan sa Panginoon. Amen? Type nga kayo ng amen if you're believing that your profession or your work, ito po ay hindi mag-identify sa iyo as a person. Then, kung alam po natin yan na si Lord hindi nagbibigay ng favoritism, this completely changes our view of work. Sometimes, Narinig ko po nung ako po nag-work sa isang Christian organization, outreach. Sabi nila, kapag daw ikaw ay nag-work sa isang Christian organization or sa church, parang grabe yung holy, yung ginagawa mo. Parang hindi po natin kailangan iset aside yung ginagawa nyo po, whatever your work right now, it is also holy, it's your service to the Lord. Hindi po yan dahil tayo po ay nagsaserve ah, sa simbahan or sa Christian organization, is holy. Lahat po tayo doing holy work if we're doing that for the glory of God. So whatever you do as a living is your full-time Christian service. Whether you are a doctor, whether you are a salesman, whether uh, ikaw ay a uh, hairdresser, whether ikaw ay driver, whether you are a BPO or business owner, we must recognize that our work is a calling from God. Ang tanong ko sa inyo, how do you see Or how do you view your work? And we won't, uh, we won't hate our work, but hindi natin siya i- i- magagawin idol. Yung iba kasing tendency na sobrang kang trabaho, sobrang gusto mo magpayaman, napaprioritize mo na yung uh, trabaho kesa sa pamilya mo or over your relationship with God. But if we really understand a biblical view of, uh, of our vocation, of our job, we won't be able to do this anymore. Na... Hindi tayo titingin na, eto, kailangan pakisamahan ko itong manager na to Pag hindi ito manager o wala ito, kung makapapala sa trabaho, hindi ko ito pakikisamahan. Dapat hindi ganun yung thinking natin because, number one point nga natin, the gospel changes our work view. And second, gospel also changes the standards of our work. Now, 
Pag kayo po ay uh, isudyante, paano nyo malalaman if you're doing good? Mayroon po kayong report card. Pag kayo po empleyado, may evaluation or uh, mayroon pong yearly, di ba, performance appraisal, evaluation. Ngayon, kung ate pong trabaho, sino po ba mag evaluate ng inyo pong ginagawa? If you're a business owner, paano ka nakipag-transact sa inyo pong mga business partner? We need to understand dito sa verse 8, serve wholeheartedly as if you were serving the Lord, not people, because you know that the Lord, I love this verse, will reward each one of you for whatever good you do, whether you are slave or free. Para kailangan, kailangan natin maintindihan that, yes, may mga boss tayo. Ako po, may boss po ako sa church. But I am not, yes, I'm working, but my real master is the Lord Jesus Christ. Ano po ba yung difference nito? Tingnan po natin yung verse 6. Ito po yung nagbigay ng uh, hint sa ating pong pinag-usapan. Obey them not only to win their favor, pag nakatingin lang po yung inyong boss, but as slaves of Christ, doing the will of God from your heart. When we work for people, yung quality po ng ating ginagawa, it depende po yan pag nagustuhan ng mga tao. Right? May aring pong six months ka sa trabaho, you give your best. Sabi mo, I did my best, but my best wasn't good enough. Familiar po sa inyo yung lyrics, di ba? Muntik na ako mapakanta doon. Pero sometimes na kailangan ng isipin, yung inyo pong manager na 10 years niya, 20 years sa trabaho, ang tingin niya sa ginagawa mo is not best. Pati disappoint ka. Because yung kanyang standard of excellence, hindi po doon nag- uh, uh, pumapantay sa binigay mo. Kaya naman sinasabi ng Bible na kailangan if you're doing something for the Lord, yung trabaho mo, pakita mo, you have an audience of one and that is our God. Kahit di po nakita yung mga, uh, yung mga boss mo, kahit di ka na-appreciate, feeling mo, ang dami mong ginawa sa trabaho, tapos hindi ka man lang pupurihin na, good job, Josel, good job, BJ, kada nung ginawa mo. Sometimes, when we work for Christ, we will be working for one who is, um, we need to understand that we have to work for the Lord and ultimately, alam po natin, nakikita ni Lord yung ating mga ginagawa. That's why Paul says that we're here to serve with respect and fear, with sincerity of heart, because we're ultimately, lahat tayo, employees, employers, we are serving God in our work rather than people. Kailangan po mabago yung ating pong standard of work because si Lord na po yung nanonood. Kahit wala nakakita, si Lord na yung nakaka nakakakita nung paano po kayo magtrabaho. Paul tells us that one who will judge is God. And the Lord will reward. Ang ganda dito, alam ni Lord, kahit hindi ka ma-appreciate ang boss mo, or ikaw naman ay mabuting employer, hindi ma-appreciate nung yung staff yung ginagawa mo, but the Lord will reward everything, uh, every good thing that you do. We've seen the gospel changes our view of work, but ang ating pong trabaho, hindi lang natatapos Monday to Friday. Isipin po natin, this is my challenge to everyone. From Monday to Friday, you are working to the service to the Lord. May isip po natin na, yes, natatrabaho sa company na to, pero ang ultimate master ko, si Lord. The only way that we'll be freed from idolizing our work, performance, if we are worshiping God. Iba kasi sa atin, pag nadidisappoint tayo, because binuhos mo lahat sa trabaho sa negosyo, disappointed ka pa din. However, if you worship God over your work, over your career, hindi ka ma, uh, masasatisfied ka dun, eh, mapupulfill ka dun sa binigay mong best because alam mo, you gave your best at si Lord na lang mag-reward at si Lord na nakakaalam yung trabaho mo. What would allow employers to treat em- uh, employees with respect? This is my last verse para po ngayong gabi. We all need to realize this truth. Mark 10.45, it says here, we have an ultimate servant, and that is our Lord Jesus Christ. For even the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve, and to give His life as a ransom for many. Paano kaya, imagine mo yung gospel na bago niya, yung... Uh, from a superior, supervisor, powerful, tapos papakisamahan niya yung kanyang inferior, yung kanyang slave with respect, and he will call them brothers or sisters in Christ. 
Why? Because when we see the humility of Jesus, He, was, he, is, he is God. Nagkatawan tao siya. He lived the riches of heaven and became servant, became slave para lang po sa ating lahat. Jesus is the ultimate example of humility and ultimate example of love. And when we grasp what He has done, nakita mo si Lord nga eh. Ginawa yun, wala siyang favoritism. We can follow His footstep. Kaya po si Jesus, mababago niya, matatransform niya kung whatever situation you are in right now sa trabaho niyo, through the power of the gospel. Kaya po, simple lang po yung message natin eh. The gospel changes our worldview sa ating pong tingin, sa ating pong mindset, sa ating pong pananaw. And also, the gospel changes our standards of work. Bibigay mo yung the best mo because si Lord ang ultimate master at alam mo na i-reward ka niya. And this is my last statement for all of us today. As workers in the marketplace, we are all Christ representatives who honor and please God by treating each other's uh, other right, fair, and good. Let us all pray. Lord Jesus, thank you for your sacrifice, for being a servant, so that we can have rich, uh, riches from, uh, from heaven, our salvation, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus, that our ultimate master, whatever we're doing, whatever our profession, whether we are employer or employee, Lord, you are you our um, our master, the rewarder, and you see, Lord, ano po yung mga namin. Lord, we pray that you would free us from devaluing work, and you will also free us, Lord God. Pag uh, masadup po namin ginagawang idol ng amin pong profession, ng amin pong uh, position, Lord, help us. Na itong trabaho, Lord God, kung anumang meron kami, Lord God, we want to use this to serve you, to bless other people as well. Lord, we pray that you will give us, Lord God, yung service uh, sa aming pong kumpanya wholeheartedly, with sincerity of hearts, na hindi kami napipilitan na ginagawa namin yung trabaho namin because we are dedicating our work to you, O God. Lord, help us to see you more and more. Na alam po namin, Lord God, na ikaw yung magiging example of humility. You are a king. You are God. But Lord, you came here in our world to be a, become a servant and slave. You came to become ransom for many. Lord, and for that, we are forever grateful. Lord, we pray that the gospel would become so real to us whether we're employee or employee right now, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, Lord God, it will change our work view and standard of work as well because we are dedicating our work and profession to you, O God. All this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. This time, we will be partaking of a communion um, last uh, week of the month so I want every one of us, as we um, remember the sacrifices of Jesus, He is the perfect example of humility, being a servant, because He loves us so much. Now, tonight, we will remember the sacrifice and love of Jesus. As we read 1 Corinthians 11, 23-26, it says here, For I receive from the Lord what I also deliver to you, that the Lord Jesus on the night when he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way also, he took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until He comes. You know, church, as we partake of communion, so if you have your biscuit, cracker, or juice, or even water to symbolize uh, ang ating pong gagawin, please do so. Kunin niyo po yung communion elements and together we will partake of communion.
remember na ito po ay hindi ritual to be uh, observed na every week or every uh, month ginagawa natin, but it's a blessing to be received. So, let's hold the bread. Lord God, as we take this bread representing your body that was wounded, we are acknowledging that you, Jesus, um, are the perfect Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Lord Jesus, we remember that you were broken, tormented, crucified. But Lord, hindi niya tatapos yun because you are resurrected. Indeed, your sacrifices, your sacrifice brings salvation and offers everlasting life to those who will accept you as your Lord and Savior. Lord, you even said, Isaiah, Lord, you were pierced for our transgressions. You were beaten so we could be whole. You were whipped so that we could be healed. Lord, thank you for the gift of life. Thank you for saving us. And Lord, thank you for the healing na ibibigay niyo po sa amin. And Lord, as we partake of this bread, we're, only, uh, we're praying not only for our physical uh, uh, healing, but also for our spiritual, emotional, and uh, emo uh, uh, mental healing as well. Lord, we also remember those who, people, our relatives, our friends who are sick right now, yung mga kapamilya po namin. We also speak quick healing upon them in Jesus' name. Those who are infected by COVID-19, Lord God. Because we are, na, we are not magnifying this crisis, but we are magnifying who Christ is. Lord, we're receiving this provision of healing right now as we remember your great sacrifice to all of us. Church, this is the body of Jesus that was broken for us. Let's partake of the bread. Let's hold the cup. Let us all pray. Lord Jesus, as we take this cup, we remember that your blood is a sacrificial offering, Lord God, um, to be established a new covenant that God already accepted us as your children because your death and resurrection made a way for us to have a relationship with our God, the Father. We were born separated by sin, but now, Lord God, you made a way. Thank you, Jesus, that you took our punishment and you died, you paid your debt, with, uh, our debt with your debt, so that we can live as children of God and we can um, enjoy eternal life with you. Church, this is the blood of Jesus that was shed for you. Let's drink from the cup. This time, together, let's humble ourselves as we remember the sacrifice of Jesus. Let's worship God. And remember how how amazing, how deep Jesus' love for all of us. Let's worship God.
Jesus, what a privilege to be able to come before your throne of grace and remember your atoning sacrifice on the cross of Calvary. Lord Jesus, thank you for dying for us on the cross and paying the enormous price for our sins. Lord, we pray that may we never forget, forget that we have been bought with the price, the precious blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. And that we pray that we may live for him from this day on knowing that Jesus' body was broken and Jesus' uh, uh, blood shed for all of us. Lord, thank you. We are forever grateful. Before we end our service, I would like everyone uh, invite your family and friends because we have a brand new service on Saturday, July 3, 11 a.m. So as we build our new church community every Saturday, tag nyo po. Uh, share the link sa ating po mga family and friends as we start at excited po ako to be led by uh, Pastor Jailer Pagadora our brand new service Saturday 11 a.m. July 3 na po yan watch out at magkita kita po tayo dyan alright receive the Lord's blessing may the Lord bless you and keep you may the Lord make His face to shine upon you and be gracious to you may the Lord lift up His countenance upon you and give you peace all this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. God bless you everyone and we hope to see you next week. Hindi po tayo 7 p.m. but 6 p.m. sa ating uh, mid-year prayer and fasting prayer meeting po natin. 6 p.m. Wednesday. See you there. God bless everyone. Within me, 